Hey, hi. Uh, so I'm the founder of the Lift and Shift Foundation, and we're kind of heckling me to, to start the stream here tonight, but uh, that's cool. It's, it's fun because we have a full house uh, with our design team, and I'm super excited about that because we actually have a project, and we started it uh, last week. We, we did a little work on it Tuesday. Before I get into the project, I, I figured I would just give my little uh, five minutes soapbox and try to cut it down to uh, 90 seconds or so. But uh, for anybody catching the stream or, or signing in uh, afterward and maybe want to re rewind, uh, the Lift and Shift Foundation, we, we, we try to encourage uh, veterans, families, the groups into, you know, into uh, science and technology. We think everybody has a seat at the table. There are things about STEM or STEAM that, that, that people look at and think, wow, that looks really hard. I don't know if I can do that. And I got to be honest, uh, <laughs> this stuff is, is, is easy. Anybody can do this. I, I, I promise um, there, there's, there's like nothing hard here. We're, we're going we're gonna to do some things and we're, we're going to do a lot of it on the fly. Like it, it's just going to happen right now. There's no planning, no, no um, premeditated, no, no like we, we, we built this for nine hours off script so we can show up and, and tell everybody this. It's super easy. I, I don't want to distract anybody from that. So um, the, a lot of the things that, that I do and we do, especially here on, on Twitch, uh, are not planned, not set up, because I want to emphasize the fact that this is easy and anyone can do it. Um, I will also do my very best, as, as long as like I, I'm leading projects on this stream, to not use any tools that cost money. And uh, that, that's a big pet peeve for me as, as, a, as a person who wants to try to spread the, the STEM love. Um, a lot of software packages cost a lot of money. Uh, it, it's, it costs a lot of money to have Photoshop or it costs a lot of money to have um, uh, SolidWorks or, or Fusion 360. And, and you know, that, that's just the software that doesn't cover you know, a, a $15,000 3D printer if you want to go a lot, like top of the line. Um, I will say that uh, my, my, my goal here is always to use web-based uh, applications like Tinkercad because not not only because they're free but anybody can get to it as long as you have an internet connection so uh, we'll, we'll try to stick with Tinkercad as much as we can today uh, I was actually gonna do this project in Fusion 360 and and after some thought and realizing that, that we're gonna do it online I, I'm I'm gonna um, challenge myself to do it in Tinkercad and and uh, the, the the team is here now with me so it, it'll 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 be even better we have a workspace that that now is I, I switch gears and get into the the discussion about this project a few weeks ago we had a veteran uh, master sergeant in the air force uh, drop me a line and say hey can you make some cookie cutters I, I i want these cookie cutters and i want them to look like my rank for my retirement party and, and uh, you know i i if, if somebody's going to challenge me i'm going to i'm going to do it, it, it the, the 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 most fun uh, you can have is is find something you can't do and tell me that it can't be done and uh, I, I like to do it but uh, the, the team here kind of also uh, enjoys the challenge as well so um, we we spent uh, earlier this week uh, going over you know different ways to to turn a picture into a 3d object so that we can print it and uh, before we get started, before I, I like take the lead here and, and talk through a few things, I should say, as, as, as a, my, my safety brief, if we, we go back to the Army, and I am definitely the guy who causes more safety briefs, but uh, I have to give a few in my time, so uh, I, will, I will preface the, the project and the stream here today by saying uh, things that come off of a 3D printer are not necessarily food safe. We will 3D print some, and I don't think we're going to get it in 3D printing today. But we'll we'll probably come up with a uh, hopefully two different models uh, by the by the end of two hours, and um, we're going to 3D print them here. And we're going to use a, a PET G uh, is the material we're going to use to to print these, which is generally considered food safe as as a plastic. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that it's food safe just because it. it I, I'm I'm telling you that uh, if you read the the labels on all of the the, the Print materials. A lot of things will tell you that uh, you know this is not food safe, and I, I will also um, uh, repeat and reiterate those those guidelines. Uh, look for look for materials that say it's food safe. 
d design your models in a way that, that make it food safe so that it doesn't trap uh, particles of, of, of food or uh, bacteria or whatever else in it and, and, and uh, to take care to, to keep them clean so that they, they, they you know, meet like food safety guidelines because some of these things have grooves and uh, like, like uh, spaces between layers when they print, uh, you, you, you um, should take your safety into account when you uh, design things and make things. So that's it. Duh. Don't do what I do <laughs> at home. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I'm, I'm a big dumb animal, as, as I, I am uh, known for uh, elsewhere off of Twitch. But um, that's that's about it. That's that's how I'm going to leave the, the, the safety brief to get started. Um, and I only have one screen still, which is the, uh, just crazy to me to, to think that I've, I've been doing this all this time with one screen. Uh, the rest of the gang is here. The rest of the team is actually here, and we're all in a Zoom chat, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, a Teams chat. Uh, so I, I, everybody can chime in. If if uh, if, if we want to uh, take a break to to highlight some things, I, I will I will unpin me from the group, as you can see the little pin thing down there at the bottom, right there. Ding 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 ding. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm kind of like stealing the spotlight, but not really because we're gonna change scenes and go into a web browser and and something called Inkscape and and get this get this all fired up. But um, here I'm gonna grab the picture of the rank that we are trying to turn into a shape. So there it is, and it's awful tiny, right? Let me see if I can switch screens and blow that up. Okay. That's an E8 Master Sergeant rank from the U.S. Air Force. That's the image I'm working with. It's rather small, so it, it's rather pixelated when we, we uh, kind of blow it up. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to do too much talking about the pixelated type image and, and uh, you know, the, the details about uh, pixel art and vector art and things like that, other than to say that we, we, we have this challenge because we can't import pictures into Tinkercad and just make them something. Uh, but we've done it, we've tried it. It does not work. This was our product after Tuesday, and we, we, we did pretty good. We did, we did all right. Um, our goal out, out, of our, out, of, out of our Tuesday group was to learn how to convert this pixel image into um, some type, some shape. And it worked out pretty, pretty good, right? So that's that's our, our cookie cutter. I will say here though that that um, our, our cookie cutter representation is the entire size of this work plane, about two hundred millimeters. So this this is like an eight a seven eight inch cookie. It's kind of ridiculous and kind of big. And also if we zoom in on the sides of it, we we kind of see that this edge right here, this edge on the top, is is very bulky. It's not really going to cut. Uh, the dough if we like smash this into the dough so we need to to do some modification to this this cookie cutter and make it better in fact let me let me switch views here so you can so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about if anybody's watching this elsewhere uh, so th this has the, a very bulky top to it and, and we would assume that we're gonna flip this over like this and actually smash down you know on top of a cookie and turn it into um, you know a shape the shape of that that rank um, if we scale this down to a, a cookie type size, let's say one, let's say four inches is about the size of the cookie we want to make. That, that seems reasonable for a cookie, three, four inches. Um, one, two, three, four, four, four inches is probably a big cookie. We'll say like 80 millimeters. So if we scale this down to 80 millimeters, I'm, I'm counting on my, my little thing. So if we scale this down to 80 millimeters and let me click that, 80 like that and we'll just drag this out of the way for now let's not talk about that so that's about a, a three and a half inch cookie on, on the inside maybe maybe three inch cookie and it's uh well the height is nine millimeters tall so it's not a very tall cookie right and, and in fact this that's the whole size of the cookie cutter so that the cookie cutter shape is is uh, sad. So let's let's leave it at 14 millimeters right there. Even 14 millimeters is about a half inch cookie. Half inch seems reasonable for a cookie. If, if I'm thinking about a cookie, that's uh, I mean I would want to eat that, right? But but uh, let's let's drop it down a little bit so that maybe to 12. Uh, we'll go 
we'll go 10. So we can leave some of these grooves and things in the cookie. And what we still see is, while we're looking at this edge, is that it, it doesn't have like a, an, a top edge that is gonna cut the dough and, and crease the dough into the, the shape that we need. So we need to, we need to do some, some editing for, from our file. Um, I am going to open up Photoshop. And this is where I will probably have to, to struggle with uh, how I share my scenes because I don't have Photoshop set up. You're going to have to give me one minute. And Photoshop is a bit awkward on my computer. Photoshop will let me do this a little bit faster than Paint. Um, OK. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll do this in Photoshop. You can do this in Paint. Um, but Paint will, will take you longer. I, I, there's a feature in Photoshop that, that I'm going to use that will uh, make this much faster. But I'm going to trace an outline on, a, on an image. And let me get the image all ready. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to share this, this Photoshop view. Let's see if I can do that. Burn, burn, burn. Is Photoshop an option here? Let's see if Photoshop is now an option. There we go. Photoshop is an option. Woohoo! Check it out. Photoshop is behind our other screen. Let's see if I can see if I can turn that view on. There we go. All right. So that's that's a little awkward. Let's move it around a little bit. Thank you very much. So this is this is Photoshop. Um, I'm not going to use any fancy features in Photoshop. We're just going to basically zoom in, and I'm going to use the erase button to kind of. Uh, actually, we're going to just going to use the yeah we'll use the erase button. I'm going to use the magic eraser. That's not really erasing, is it? Super. And perhaps I did not want to use Photoshop, huh? All right. That's not funny. My little view is gone. That is terrible. OK. We are, we are not using Photoshop. Never mind. Scratch that, people. We will go back to uh, we will use paint, I suppose. Paint, it's, paint's going to be a struggle. Actually, let's open our other view in paint. Paint. Nope. OK. Well, this is this is not uh, not an easy watch on on your end, which is kind of what I was worried about. But let's let's do it. Let's see where paint is in my list of apps to share. Paint is now available. There it is right there. Cool. All right. So what I want to do in paint, we need to create a, a few different um, parts to this cookie cutter. So I don't have, a, I don't have an example. Oh, look, look at that. I have both of them right there on this view. Super. Great. But um, we need different parts of this cookie cutter. We want parts that are that are thicker than others, and we want parts that are thinner than others. So what I, what I was going to use in Photoshop was a tool that traces. And it, I, can, I can set the thickness of the line that it traces around shapes and basically just ignore everything else. So Photoshop would have made this happen uh, probably by now already. We're, we're going to use paint, the old school paint. It, it, it is free. It still comes with every version of Windows. And um, that's that's 
we're, we're, we're gonna do it. It's, it's gonna take an extra couple minutes, but uh, it, it, it won't be that bad. But what I want to do is save a couple different parts of, of this. So let's let's go back to paint and we are gonna remove the outside um, layer. So I'm gonna change the color here. We're gonna change the, the, the brush size like that. Oh, and um, I wonder, can we do this? Can we do this like we do in paint? No, no, we can't. Okay, never mind. Back out. So we're gonna erase all the outside parts. And I'm gonna be careful. Um, I'm, I don't use paint too often, so I don't know what, what the brushes, all the different brushes do. I would like something with a sharp edge on it. Uh, oh, look, that, that seems a bit ridiculous. That also seems a bit ridiculous. That does not have a sharp edge on it. I guess we will go back to the, the original brush. Okay. Wow, this is... Better. Better. Oop. Undo a little bit there, because I'm getting a little excited. Okay, and undo the outside completely. Back over here, because I seem to have butchered a little bit of it. That is really sad about the whole, uh, it keeps coming back. So paint, the paint brushes don't, um, don't have like a solid brush. It's got a, like a watercolor type, type brush that puts a pattern out. I'm not an expert in the whole, this whole part. I just know enough to be kind of dangerous here. Do, do, do. So we're also going to try to get rid of this circle. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to do this because we kind of want the circle shape. So I'm going to get rid of the crazy inside of the circle. We'll see what happens there. And I also want to we want to. We, uh, we will leave this and see how it looks. We um, anybody anybody want to chime in on on? Think we should leave this this uh, um, space in the. I think we should leave the space in the middle. I think it's going to be a challenge. In fact, let's go all the way without uh, erase the circle off completely. This is going to be a brutal. Like that. Okay. I really want to put the star in there. I think, I think uh, Yancy said it. Uh, Tuesday. But that star looks terrible. Let's not do that. Maybe we, may, I will try this in Inkscape. So we will save this and drag it into Inkscape and do the two, do the two different shapes. So I'm gonna save this as a JPEG, and we will call it image, desktop image three. Super. Okay. So now let's go back to, yeah, Firefox right there. Super, super. So now we've got, we've, we've got the shapes. We wanna go back to, to, to something else. 
I'm going to open up a new app that I've never used before on Twitch or anywhere else. Uh, in fact, I've only used it for the first time with, with the design team uh, Tuesday, I think. Tuesday was probably the first time. It's an app called Inkscape. And Inkscape is, a, is, is an art tool just like paint, but it is a, uh, a vector art tool, which means that it doesn't produce graphics and images the same way that, that uh, uh, paint and Photoshop and Canva and, and, and uh, uh, GIMP and uh, CorelDRAW and all those other apps, all, all those art apps, all those fancy art apps uh, produce pixel art and not many of them will produce vector art. Um, and that, that's, we need vector art to create the shapes. So, a uh, glass of uh, water. Thank you. While I dig through a pile of uh, software, I'm actually just, I don't know if anybody else can see that or not, but Inkscape, I'm opening Inkscape. Uh, and while it's opening and I'm waiting, uh, yeah, there is the, um, oh, wow, that was fast. Okay, cool. Browse other, load other files. Let's search for the image I just made. I'm opening that now, importing actually. So now that it's, it's Inkscape is open, it's eating up my entire screen because it opens full screen. So let me shrink it down a little bit to a view that works for everyone. Very cool. I'm gonna open this now and see how we can share Not my paint screen anymore, but this app called um, Inkscape. Here we go. All right, it's gonna be a little weird. There it is right there on the big screen over there. On the smaller screen, it is, we will turn off uh, Firefox. So we can see in the background, there we go, cool, all right. Super, so this is Inkscape, and we're gonna use Inkscape right now to trace this image. And this was the, 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 the reminder. Uh, so when, once you import an image into Inkscape, it is a picture, it is a, like, a, like a bitmap. It's a bunch of X's and Y's and things, and we need to convert the X's and Y's into something called vector uh, art. And we ask Inkscape to do that for us. So what I will do is ask Inkscape to trace bitmap. You can't see it on the Twitch screen, uh, but under the path menu is a function called trace bitmap. Trace bitmap opens this screen on the right. The, there's this uh, trace bitmap screen. We can, we can do it uh, multiple detection modes like brightness cutoff, color quantization, auto trace, center line tracing, edge detection. You can uh, detect multiple colors if you don't have a black and white or a two color image. Uh, pixel art, so they're, they're all different modes of, of imaging where uh, there, there's a, a bunch of math that happens behind the scenes. I'm just gonna use regular brightness cutoff. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do first, I forget this all the time. I will stare at Inkscape forever and wonder why nothing is happening. I have to pick the, the image. So I, I just had to click on the image right there uh, to select all. That, so I had to select the, the actual picture. And now if you, you can see on the bottom, the bottom right, there's a preview of trace bitmap. So now I can, I can set the threshold for the brightness cutoff and you can see how it's changing and getting darker until uh, till it, it just doesn't know, everything is bright enough to, to be part of the, the image and everything, nothing there is bright enough to be part of the image. So I'm just gonna grab a, a spot in the middle that looks like, like reasonable. Um, I think what I had originally, like 0 0.45. 0 0.45 is a number, that, that looks reasonable right there. So we will apply, we will apply that right there. And uh, there's all these other settings here. I, I leave them alone, I don't touch them. The, the speckles to uh, ignore small spots in the bitmap the smooth corners, which kind of like rounds things out and makes things uh, not so uh, jagged. Uh, basically, that will add a lot of um, a lot of vector vectors to the to the file and, and uh, a bunch of shenanigans really of, without without getting into any of the math or anything. And optimize um, does some some other fancy stuff with math and, and imaging. And 
not really like imaging that you would think of, but it, it kind of compares um, the X and Y dots around it to, um, to figure out, you know, levels of darkness and uh, other uniformity. I won't, I won't uh, dig too much more into that part of it, but we have a, we have a pretty, a pretty good image here. The black part in this, this, that the black part is covering over uh, the, the image that we, we opened and we, we loaded. So the black, the, the, the black uh, color is actually the vectors that have, have been traced over the bitmap. So if I click on the vectors, actually I, what I can do is I can do the edit vectors. So if we go back to, um, where is it? I can show, I think I did this before. Oh, not here, but uh, elsewhere. Edit. Where can I? Oh, right there. There's on the side. There is edit path by nodes. There's all these other toolboxes on the other side. So I can edit the path by nodes. Now you can see the actual points on the vectors. So I could start deleting points out of this. Like this one right here probably won't won't change the image at all if I delete that right there. And if I zoom, this is the the crazy. I don't know. Let me see. What buttons are zoom? Oh, okay. There's there's the zoom buttons. So now I can show what the actual vector kind of looks like if I if I zoom in here. So this point has has a magnitude and direction, uh, which is kind of like the definition of a vector in, in math. Uh, and uh, it, it's a Thursday night uh, uh, around dinner time. I don't I don't want to I don't want to dwell on math too much. But if we change the the magnitude and direction of this point right here. Which by using this this little red dot uh, kind of changes the magnitude and direction of that that vector we can change the shape and there's there's where you can kind of see like the difference between um, pixel art and vector art is you can manipulate the shape by manipulating individual vectors in a path and that's why it's called uh, this menu up here is called path um, and and we're, we're manipulating all these paths so I, I could I can move this point dead to the center of this, uh, this star and make it a little sharper by doing that, for example, and make it uh, mirror the other side a little bit. So uh, there, there are things we could do to edit this to make it look better. In fact, I, I will kind of like move this over just a tad like that. So now they're, they're um, much more star shaped. And you can see, like I'm starting to define the point of the star by moving these vectors into a, a more appropriate position. And this this is how you edit vector art, which can get a little complicated. But the star is much sharper uh, that way. And we could do the same thing. We could add a a point to the inside of these stars right here. I I and I, I don't use uh, vector art all the time, so I don't know. I don't remember which button it is to add a point. But we could add points and make make the the inside of the stars a little bit sharper. So, for example, like like this point right here, we could bring this down so that it, it is sharper on this star. Uh, I and I did not want to spend this much time on it, but I'm I'm getting like all distracted in my own little rabbit hole. Ah! In fact, I'm gonna undo what I've just done. And leave, uh, well, we'll bring it down a little bit. How about that? No, stop that. Just like that. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I won't touch anymore. Don't anybody let me touch that any anymore. <laughs> Heckle me if, if, I, if I start monkeying with it. Uh, my, my, my OCD uh, flares up. Uh, make fun of me for, for not doing that. But that, that's, how, that's how vector art is, is manipulated. And that's how, why it's different from... Um, um, pixel art. So now I'm going to export this. And when I export this, I'm going to export this as a single image. I'm going to export this as a, not an S, not an Inkscape SVG, but a plain SVG uh, is the option. And I'm going to uh, export this as a, just a, just a plain old S SVG. And export button is, is hit. You, I don't think you can see that on Twitch, but uh, I basically just exported this black shape right here. As as a, as an SVG, which is a vector art SVG image, and this is the only two-dimensional image we can import into Tinkercad. So uh, it it gets a little um, confusing 
because we did this, I, I did this um, Tuesday night, and what I found was uh, Canva has the option to export SVGs. Certain, um, Canva's an, an, another art program uh, online, and uh, they, they have an app now too, but uh, uh, they don't export the SVG in, this, in the same format as, as a, a vector file. They, 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 they kind of do their own thing, and it, it's, it's an SVG for web graphics, which is uh, slightly different. Um, and it, it does not work if you import it into um, Tinkercad or Fusion 360 or SolidWorks from my experience. Um, but yeah, so this is this is about it. And I'm going to leave this here. We're going to leave it um, Inkscape open right now. I'm going to go back to Tinkercad and we will drop this model in. So let's let's go back to Tinkercad. Let me find the window to open. Oh, it, it's uh, Firefox on my on this screen. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of those. Let's swap those out. I hope that, I hope that was clear. Uh, like I know there were questions uh, today in Slack, so I, I hope that was that was helpful for for uh, review of how do I how do I export an SVG from uh, Inkscape. Uh, let me find my file. It is number three. We're going to drag this right into um, Tinkercad right now. And there it goes. So there, there's our shape. There's the shape we just cut up. And I can, I can manipulate it, do all kinds of things with it like that. Cool. I'm going to... I want to keep the scale the same because for the rank, it, it, it's kind of important. This is why I didn't want to try to sketch it or draw it. So I want to keep the rank kind of like scaled. So I'm going to hold down the shift key when I, when I scale so that it, it retains its uh, uh, dimensions or ratios of dimensions. And I'm going to take apart our original uh, cookie cutter right here. And I'm going to take it apart even more. Oh, no, nope, it is apart right there. Okay, cool. So we can set that apart. So we can see the difference between these two right there. Cool. But we can also see that the fact that I, I did this already earlier. And what we need now is is this, this idea of... Uh, Okay, I'm going to come back to um, the main view here so I can chat just a minute uh, because we need to start assembling parts. We're almost to the point where we're going to start assembling parts. So we need to look at this uh, objectively, like uh, not from from a canvas or a, a, you know an art perspective, but from a user perspective, which is, is very important at this point. Uh, the, the idea is that somebody's going to be making cookies with this. And, and what, we, what we need is to give them a way to, to, to press down uh, on, on the cookie cutter evenly so that they can, they can actually use it. And we need a, a, a way for the cookie cutter to actually manipulate the dough or, or you know, uh, uh, trim the outside and, and imprint some shapes and things on the inside. So um, when, we, when we think about that, uh, the, easy way, the easy way to do this and to um, create the the requirements for 3D printing is is just the shape we have here, which is is what we what we left with on Tuesday night with with uh, the design team. So I'm going to come back to to the, the other view here. But having a flat bottom here, just like this work plane, we'll be 3D printing this on a 3D printer with a flat work plane. It, it'll have a glass plate, and we need the the PETG material, the plastic material, to stick to the glass plate to start cutting, which ironically also gives us a a um, a flat surface for a, a user to to press down on and or even use a roller on for like a rolling pin if they wanted to roll this uh, um, cookie cutter over with a rolling pin to kind of like squish it down over the dough that, that might be possible here also excuse me but um but the other the other thing that that is is um, kind of important to us is the fact that we need uh, um, a, a finger grip. So, I, I what I what we expect, what I, at least what I expect here is this lip between this part and this part serves as a a finger grip for someone to pull the the cookie cutter back out of the dough, and and that's cool and all, and we we, we kind of need that. We that kind of works for us. But this is a very thin grip. 
especially for the fact that our, our the actual like cookie cutter blade is so thick and bulky. Uh, I do not see them working out so well. So I, I think what we might want to try to do is go back um, and redesign this part of it. So, well, yeah, let, let's do this. So we took the star out of the middle here. We could drop this in and it doesn't look that bad really right now. Uh, it needs to be smaller and shorter, but we, we can align that later. Let's, let's focus on the, the cookie cutter portion here in the middle. I really want that to be as thin as possible and there's no good way to do it. Oh, wait, no, I think I, I, I have a good idea. Let's do this. Let's create a, let's duplicate this. And let's, let's shrink it down just a tiny, tiny bit. I hope, I hope everybody's thinking what I'm thinking, but I'm going to create a hole out of this. I'm going to raise it up a bit and I'm going to, I'm going to align these so that the hole is inside. And now I'm going to trim it to make that shape thinner. My goal here is to make it, um, I don't know, let's say two millimeters. Any, anybody, anybody want to, um, I think two, this, this is going to be a bit of a challenge because two millimeters is, it looks, it sounds reasonable. And I, I, I dig it, but because we're, we're not using metal, we're using, um, we're using, I'm, I'm going to come back to, to my view on, on Twitch here for a minute. We're, we're using uh, pet G, which, which is not as strong as metal. So if I break out my, my trusty digital caliper here and I set this to a two millimeter, um, width and show you that is two millimeters that that right there that space is two millimeters that that makes sense for a, a uh, oh, if I flip that around you can see that it, it's it's 2.05 millimeters you can you can you can get a sense that uh, that that might be reasonable for a piece of metal uh, if this were a metal cookie cutter we we might want to go like two and a half millimeters for the thickness here um, I think I, th I think uh, two and a half millimeters doesn't make it too bulky. Here, I'll I'll do the the two and a half right there. So that that gives us two and a half millimeters. And you can see my my pinky finger here on it. Oh, oh! Somebody has a cookie cutter to measure on the team. I that 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 noise you just heard was a chat from uh, from the rest of the team, and. Uh, that we're we're gonna get we're gonna get some guesstimates on on thicknesses for cookie cutters. Um, I'm guessing right now that we want to make this about two and a half millimeters, which is um, is is strong enough for a piece of uh, plastic, uh, and and hopefully not not too thick to actually do the the the, the part of slicing and parting of the dough. But uh, I think two and a half millimeters will will work out well. Um, my my 3D printer usually works in increments of 0.2 and 0.4 for layers. So point uh, if we go um, 0.4 millimeters for walls here. So we're looking at uh, uh, 2.4 millimeters would be six six layers of, of of thickness through the through the this this wall here. Um, I can go back to the the regular view here, but this would print six layers. Through there, and I think um, um, maybe maybe two millimeters will work. That that'll that'll be five. That'll be about five layers, I think. So that there may be a little bit of shrinkage. There usually is when when you when you three D print things, they, they it grows, uh, it like swells and and contracts. So uh, it, it won't be completely accurate on two millimeters. It might be like one point nine five or something, which is something I, I'm I'm trying to mitigate with this. But uh, if we go with the 2.4 millimeters. That is dun, 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 right there, because I'm terrible with this. And two two millimeters. You can see not really a big difference right there. Not 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 terrible. I don't think that's really gonna to damage anything. But since we're making two different cookie cutters, we're gonna we're gonna give our veteran, our our master sergeant. 
a couple options here for cookies. So I think maybe I will try to make this um, in a 2.4 and a two millimeter version. And we'll, we'll each one will have some different features. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try that. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, all right. But, so now we, we need to do some quick math. And we know that the width of this, we're gonna, we're gonna use one, one measurement. We're gonna use the, the width of the, uh, the cookie cutter in general because it's, it's gonna get complicated to try to figure out all the, the measurements around the outside. So we'll, we'll go with um, the width of this one being 48.24 right here. Oh, you know what, never mind. Because as I scale this, it's going to change the width anyway. So, uh, Dave, I, I appreciate the the uh, measurement uh, double check. You have, yeah, you could see you have on a steel um, cookie cutter, it's like a half a millimeter. So I think we're going to go with two millimeters here. And we're going to let the, the yeah, exactly, yeah. So I, I think two millimeters is safe for us. And, and uh, exactly right. So um, as I scale this to the, the size of the cookie, it, the two millimeters will, will shift uh, a little bit and uh, we, we could size this to the size of the cookie now uh, and and do all of that or we can we can do this and scale it down I think I'm gonna um, actually yeah let, let's let's scale this to the size of the cookie let's let's pull these parts away also if we're gonna if we're gonna do it all right now let's do it all together fun fun cool all right so the size of the cookie, we were gonna say is, um, oh, it, that's fair, 80-ish 80, 80, 80 millimeters. We'll go to 80. In fact, I'll click here, 80. So that means we'll make this one, if we want two millimeters on each side, we subtract four, so that would be uh, um, 76 like that and that, that will give the, the sidebars um, the correct width but it's not really doing much for the, the top and bottom cutting so maybe I will drag this taller Oh, did I not scale it? Oh, that would be terrible. Well, we'll um, we'll drag this up like this a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That see that looks much better. As far as the shape is concerned, I, I feel like I butchered that one. Let's. I'll pull that down one more. One more. Um, so we'll go seventy-seven, and we'll try to recenter this again. Like that. It's shaving more off the top than the bottom. Oh no! My audio is cutting out. I seem to be having that problem. I might be having internet problems today. I don't see internet problems on the list. But I have heard already once that um, my internet is, or my, my audio is cutting in and out. So uh, I'm a little disappointed in that. We will, we will, I will drag this down. I will do the, the um, snap grid, half millimeter. Come down once, just like that. Actually, we'll, we'll raise this up a little bit because it, it, it looks wider on one side than the other. So I feel like maybe I was snapping to um, one millimeter when this should be a, a larger size maybe. So let's check that out real quick. Yeah, see that's, that's interesting. It might be teams, it might, it might be uh, uh, teams just angry with me. And that looks like we might be trimming off too much off of the edge here. If we look at this corner and that corner, it looks a, a, a little thinner. So maybe I will go to a happy medium and say 77.5. As we do this the, the old school way, instead of hopping into um, uh, 
Photoshop or Tinkercad or um, uh, Fusion 360 to kind of trim this. We're going to trim this this way. So I'm going to I'm going to grab this, combine them now, and now we've got this much thinner cookie cutter part. And the cookie cutter part is, um, yeah, we're going to leave that at like 11, 11, 11 millimeters as a height. That's um, what, like uh, nine sixteenths of an inch or something. So we'll leave that part there. Now we've got this chunky part. We should we should line up on the bottom. Let's make that much shorter, right? It doesn't need to be five millimeters. We can we can actually make that like a like a three millimeter lip, and we can duplicate it and we can grow it. So it's eighty by fifty three. We can scale it up just a pair. Oh, it's an, I'm not. Oh, I I'm clicking the wrong button. Duh, that's why I wasn't scaling properly earlier. There we go. Let's center those and make it chunky. Now it's. Oh wait, no back. Sorry, I'm trying to work too fast. I need to make that three millimeters height because I scaled all dimensions. Sadly, okay. So now we're we're getting a wider, a wider part here. If I duplicate this again and do it one more time, we get this, we get this chunky edge. So I'm doing that one more time, and we're gonna grab both of them. Align them out and combine them. Now we've got this this much chunkier edge around the outside, and we can we can grab that and scale it like that. Now now it's starting to look like a cookie cutter, right? Yes. Oh, I'm psyched. That is starting to look like a cookie, the, the outside shape of a cookie cutter. I see a little tiny bit on the top there. I don't know if it's uh, Tinkercad's view or not. So we, I think we can scale this up one more, one more um, step. Just to make sure. I, that, that probably disappears when I put it in the slicer to print. We can look on. Oh, we can look underneath and see just how that that. Yeah, see, that's going to disappear when I when I put it in the slicer, in case anybody's curious. But it it's weird that it it's uh, not aligned because it's the same shape. We we've, we've literally like manipulated it um, three times. But if we combine all this, now we've got this cookie cutter shape. Oh, I'm psyched. Very psyched about that. Oh, it it, it worked. Cool. Excellent. So now we can drop this in the middle and start playing with this. And I think this is the shape that we really want to change and give a couple options. We can uh, we can duplicate this one and throw it to the side over here in case we want to make another one. I'm going to delete delete this crazy thing up here. And we'll set this up here as our, our model. Uh, that's like our default. That's what we want to look at. Oh, look, I'm noticing. <gasps> Shut up. Look at this. Look at these options. Oh my gosh. I have, um, I hope everybody's catching that. Tinkercad announced some, some new features and this is the first time I'm noticing this feature here, this fill mode. Look at that. Oh, that would have saved us so much time. <laughs> fill mode gives you the shape, the default shape. The silhouette gives you the the outside shape, like a shadow of the, the 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 entire object. Outer line traces the outside of it with with well, sharp corners, round corners, flat corners. Interesting. And oh, a line width. Can you shrink that down? Oh my gosh! Look at that. That 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 is. I'm impressed with this. I, is is everybody else seeing this? That changes a lot. I'm going to undo all of that. 
we're gonna leave it on our default for now, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna we're I, I'm gonna come back to and play with that. Oh no, lost audio. If uh. Okay, that's sad. All right, I may I may have to I may have to drop out and uh, and uh, end the, the stream early. Let me let me drop into chat here and chat with the gang. Uh, I'm not watching elsewhere. Elsewhere. Mm, I may need to drop out and end the stream early could be too much audio uh, thanks for the warning about lack of audio uh, cool features cool new shape feature in Tinkercad. Okay, all right. So as I chat with the team here for just a second, uh, coming back to this this Tinkercad screen because I am so impressed with this. This thing right here. If we duplicate that and drag it away, as our as our shape model. Like, like watch this. This is cool, and I'm so glad that Tinkercad did this so we could change it to an outer line and change the, the thickness of the outer line, I'm assuming to two millimeters like that. Uh, that, that doesn't look like two millimeters. That, oh yeah, it does actually. It lines up with the two millimeter here. Then we could make it 12 millimeters just like we had. Look at that. That saved us so much time over what I just did. Very crazy. Very, very crazy and very, very cool. All right. And then we, we we could possibly do other things with it, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that and leave it. I wonder what happens when we do this as an outer line or a silhouette. Let's try it. Let's try it out. Let's check it out. Let's see what happens. Default outer line. Oh wow! Let's do that. Let's do that in this cookie, and then we'll we'll put the star right in the middle. Super cool. Actually, let's line it up like that. Let's do this. Let's uh, instead of me struggling, I will just do the the align tool here, like that. Oh, that is super, super cool. It, it, it like did everything for you. Oh, it, it's, we would have to add some bars on the sides here. I think I can do that though. Let's see how tall this is. This is 4.8 millimeters. We, we, any thoughts on how we want that? Um, well, let's, let's try line width here too. Four. Uh-oh. Well, it's starting to get a little choppy in the middle. We'll go back to the five. But I can add some parts in there once we set a height for this. I'll add uh, some pieces inside. Some small strips inside to kind of like line up on that. And it, it'll it'll make it look good. It'll 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 work out all right. We'll, we'll do like that, which means we'll make this four millimeters, like that, and we'll duplicate that and drag it to the other side, just like that to fill in everything. We can stick in a star. Um, that star looks challenging. Oh, nope, nope. Where is it? Where's it going?
We'll change the degrees to five like that. Yep. Make it four tall. Oh, I dig this. Okay. Maybe the star gets a little smaller. And we'll kind of try to put the star in the middle and then I'll line it up. So let's combine, let's, uh, actually, yeah, this, this doesn't look bad, right? And then we, we for, for like overall purpose, would add a, like a, maybe maybe two millimeters here, two, two millimeter thick pad to the top, to the overall top of this thing. Oh no, we, oh, we can use the silhouette feature. <gasps> Again, this is amazing. We're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna use the silhouette feature to create a flat platform, make it two millimeters tall, and set it right inside of this. So that it fills in the whole thing. Like that. Now all our parts are, are safe and secure inside. So we can literally grab all of those right there, align them in the middle, just like that. And if we combine all of it, now we've got this solid cookie cutter part. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that because I, I kind of want to poke the middle out. Maybe we, oh, maybe we, um, let's undo that. Let's take the pink part out and leave a circle right here in the middle. Hopefully you got, uh, you're you're still with me somewhere. Let's make the height here two millimeters instead of twenty. And now that circle is going to hold the star on for us while we while we do this. But we still are able to use uh, our fingers if we need to push the dough out or something like that, or a spoon to push the, the dough out of the, the cookie cutter. So we can, we can do that number right there. And bring that down just a bit. Actually, we'll leave, we'll leave it up like that. And align everything again. So now our cookie cutter has, has some shapes to it. How's everybody feel about that? That isn't, I think that is pretty cool. Oh, um, I did not look at the other end of this. Oh. I think some of that will come out in the printing, but I also think we're missing a little bit of it, right? That will not come out in the printing right there right here in this corner, if you can see right there what I just covered up on that corner, that we need something right there. Kind of fill in that spot. like that.
Oh, that's terrible. Okay. So it's not a... Oh, no, we'll, we'll do this. Four. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to cut the triangle. Once, once I grab that right there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the triangle to cut this part, so we can have two pieces. Like that. Dun da da. Cool. Now I can duplicate it. Send it across, because we'll need to fill in that part too, and then I can just flip it over. 180. Okay. Oh, oh yes. Better, much better. I think this little notch here will come out in the printing. This won't show in the print because it's such a small thing. It won't, uh, the vector art might not catch it, but just in case it does, I can add other features into this later, like a, a little half moon type thing to thin that out. In fact, I can, I can kind of do it right now. This is where it gets a little tedious and a little boring, but um, while well, we have a minute. I really dig that new feature from Tinkercad, though. Oh, the other way. Other way. Other way. Why would you do that? Why, why are you in the way? Stop. <laughs> Every time I hold my mouse over, the, the, the little number is in the way. I don't want the number, I want to grab. Thank you. So now we can shift this down a little. Pull that up. Push this down to four. And realize that he, he's, he's completely underneath. I'll put him back up to zero so he's flat on the work plane. And just like that. Oops. Better. That will not show up in the print as uh, anything more than possibly a, uh, uh, I mean, well, you'll never see it in the print, really. Cool, so let's check out the other side of this. So I think those bars, oh, those bars did make it all the way up here. Okay, so they are right at the top. I think that's decent for one cookie cutter, right? I feel, I feel good with that. I, what I don't feel good with is that I, I hear this echo. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad I have uh, uh, stream chat. I can see that now. Thank you. Yeah, it does, it's, it's looking much better, yeah. So I, I think um, I think the that uh, inside shape thing was just kind of wild. That blew my mind uh, on, on, on this, this Tinkercad feature. So let's, um, let's do the Let's do the standard one on this. Oh no no no! Let's uh, let let's grab this one. Let's let's try this one again now, the inside deal. And we'll do one that presses and leaves the cookie out. That way we have we have one of each. One with the inside. One with the outside. I find that kind of wild. Oh, the other thing we could have done with. Oh my gosh, the other thing we could have done with that. Um. 
Let's, let's go back to this. Duplicate this and pull this aside. Watch, watch this. If we change this to the outer line like that and make it a hole and then duplicate this. I'm getting so many crazy ideas right now. Duplicate this and make it... Oh, no, no, sorry. Um, duplicate this and make it a silhouette. Put inside of these, if you're ready for this, it's going to cut this out and make a bunch of little grooves. It's going to make... There, see, now it's like thinner grooves. So we could, for example, make this thicker here. And we get thinner and thinner grooves uh, cut into the, the cookie. So we, we, could eventually, we could eventually do this to the point that it, it, it's um, two millimeters thick, just like the, the outside. And it cuts thin, thin grooves inside. So if I, for example, uh, crank this up to eight, like that, combine this, the, those, those lines get thinner and thinner and thinner, and I did not uh, align it after I cranked it up, but if we align it and combine those, it just gets thinner and thinner to the point where uh, some of these are, are starting to break apart. But I, I think that's super cool that this, this feature exists. But, but what I'm going to do with this one is duplicate it, drag it in here. We're going to make it four millimeters tall. No, we're not going to make it four millimeters tall. Okay, now we'll make it four millimeters tall. <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that, that this this whole... I, that. Uh, this fill mode is just blowing my mind. It's it's very very cool, I think. But let's let's align this and see what happens if I need to scale the, that inside part. Let's check out some of the the closer views. Oh, that that actually doesn't look bad just like that, right? And I think this whole thing this whole thing wouldn't need any more um added to it. I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of cool with this. What I, what I think is going to happen here, what I think might be a problem, is uh, the joints right here where, where like the, the, the fins touch the outside, especially this one right here, might not print so well. And it looks like if, uh, if there's enough force, it might break. So we might have to scale this part up just a little bit more. I'm going to hold shift down and scale it. Uh, we will make it... How wide was it the first time? 51.19. We'll make it... Um, shift and scale. We'll make it 52.5. Like that. I'm just guesstimating uh, numbers at this point. I'm not trying to do any uh, complicated math, but yeah, you can see that now it, it kind of did, like bites into the the uh, the shape more, uh, better better connection on the end, right there. Uh, less less to to break for us, <clears throat> um, but still might flex a little bit. I might consider putting a thin bar from top to bottom across this. That is like a, something like, we'll go four millimeters across and the entire length of this, this tray, this cookie cutter, because we don't want the, all the parts to break and snap off. And we're kind of leaving ourselves vulnerable to the, the fact that if somebody's mashing down in the middle of this, they might snap everything out of the middle. So we will drag that up like that. 
and grab all of these parts, align them again like that, combine, dun dun dun. So now we, it, it looks like we jammed a popsicle stick inside of it. And uh, my, my intent was not to like make it look goofy, but let's zoom in on it this way. It was not to make it look goofy, but to give it some uh, stiffness on the, the other side of it so that the, everything is attached without um, covering up too many holes. But I think that, that that probably works out really not too bad right there, right? And there are the, the same height there. So we have we have two different style cookie cutters right here. I kind of dig this. I kind of, I kind of, I'm, I'm psyched about this. Uh, and I haven't done any of the plans I talked about earlier about like taking screenshots and, and tweeting about it. Uh, this has just been all like cookie cutter in Tinkercad. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of impressed. We, we did this all in Tinkercad and we did it all like, um, this new shape feature thing is, is cool. It, it takes so much out of me going back to paint or uh, Inkscape, which was, which is, what I was gonna do, and and, and I, I dig this, I dig that. Uh, so what what I what I'm gonna leave this with is um, I think we're 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 pretty much done here with with two separate cookie cutters. I I may try to print these over the weekend because I can do that kind of thing and, and just leave it run. I don't know how long these are gonna take to print, but um, my guess is probably uh, five hours maybe for each one. <coughs> but what I can do now is take some screenshots and send them off to our veteran and say, we're gonna, we're gonna send you two different cookie cutters and you can try them out. And uh, uh, this, this, uh, this is a pretty big challenge, a pretty cool challenge, but if I can come back to, 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 to the me view for a minute and we've got all the crazy screens up there. Uh, now that I see it, it, it looks, looks a little ridiculous, but there's, there's the, original, the original view of uh, Inkscape and our, our you know, a workspace full of cookie cutters. And I, I, I dig it. I'm impressed. I, I think it's kind of cool. We we now have the ability to to take other rank. We can I can take my, my staff sergeant rank. I can turn that into a, a cookie. I can turn that into uh, a dog tag or something. I, I, I you know, I, I can make tags for my, 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 my kid's cat uh, that, that are shaped like, uh, who knows what, uh, 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 Thundercats <laughs> or uh, <laughs> so some other cartoon, but uh, you know, without ripping off any copyright. Uh, but now we, we can do that stuff. We can, we can, we can easily convert our objects into, uh, or our, our art into shapes, which was the entire goal of all of this. Excuse me. And as I, as I come back to this, I'm, I'm realizing it's only quarter after quarter after seven on my clock, but we've been at this for an hour and 15 minutes. I, I haven't taken any breaks. Like I said, I was going to, uh, I hope I didn't um, jam anybody else up on uh, watching, participating. Thank you for the feedback uh, from the, the like the measurements and stuff because what what was not apparent on the stream on Twitch is that, that there's 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 a herd of people on on this end in Zoom. And, or uh, I keep saying Zoom. Uh, uh, we're on Teams, and I think my my Teams is crashing out. It may be angry, um, but. We as as a team can can do this kind of stuff, and we, we actually have a bunch of models like uh, that that the people don't get to see, like our dice tower that that Dave designed. That we we are going to drag back into a workspace here sometime soon and, and redesign it so that it, it's like a two part piece that you can fold up, uh, all kinds of ideas. And um, we're well, I'm not sure everybody on the team knows this yet, but we we are we are just we are planning. On, on a way to showcase all of this stuff that, that we design here. So we may put together our own website. We may set up a, a, an account on uh, Thingiverse, uh, Cults 3D, something like that. So, so somewhere out there so that, to say that like these are all the things that the, the Lift and Shift Foundation team made and uh, you can download the STLs. Here's, here's the, the, the versions of them. My preference, honestly, is, is a, a, a place on our website <clears throat> where people can go and check out you know all the cool stuff from our design team. Uh, that's that's my my goal. Um, I just don't have a lot of time to, to code that. So uh, if if there are any volunteers, if any anybody catches this on Twitch and wants to jump into a, a little bit of uh, JavaScript, um, drop us a line in the chat, and I, I I will gladly give credit for anybody who who writes uh, websites. We we can tag it copyright. Uh, uh, 
I'm a super coder uh, at at uh, TikTok.com or whatever. Uh, I'm I'm all for all of that. I I, I, I dig it. But uh, but yeah, I I think um, what what we'll end up doing now is, is sometime in the before the end of this year uh, and before the end of this year uh, happens, we'll we'll uh, find a way to share and showcase and highlight the the, the projects that, that the design team does so whether whether it's a uh, a fry basket for for a food truck or a cookie cutter for uh you know a, a veteran um uh, retiring all these things are, are are cool and and we get a little experience and a little like, like hands-on designing things thinking about stuff like user design like 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 you know we need a flat surface and we need a finger grip for a cookie cutter so that people can grab it and pull it back out of the dough. Those those are those are important features when you, you're trying to actually design a, a product instead of you, you know um, trying to, to make art, um, which are both kind of valuable in their their own aspect. But uh, it's it's fun to solve the problems and think about it from a user point of view when when you're you're, you're building stuff and making stuff. And I, I really I I kind of dug this and and it's from my perspective. Uh, teaching workshops and getting in here and putting my hands on Tinkercad, I like. I, I, I don't know when this new feature just popped up, but it's it's there now and and it's it's super cool. I I dig it. We may we may make some videos uh, of that and and uh, talk up uh, Tinkercad. And hopefully they, they will they will sponsor us. But I think I'm I think I'm done. I think that's that's the straight. Can anybody, I mean I still got a little bit of time. Uh, anybody on the team want to drop in the chat and, and kind of like uh. Um, any other ideas out there? I I only had really like two ideas, like like a um, the original shape and then like the inverted shape, and that's just so wild that Tinkercad added that feature just just for us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't have too many other ideas uh, other than you know like like the things we said about the circle falling out of the star. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I suppose we we could we could try to tweak this a little bit more and put a hole in there for the star on on the if I go back here we could uh, we could try to tweak this one a little bit more and try to stick the hole in the star and, and smooth out some of those lines uh, using the, the the star shape from from this part um, I, I I don't know how big a difference that's going to make to be honest in the the grand scheme of uh, uh, dough and cookies expanding and like oozing as they cook. I think uh, the, having the points is is a bigger deal than having the the sharper edges on the inside. So it, it's it's as as I come back now to chat uh, about the the um, how I expect this to look. Um, I, th I think that what we got out of Inkscape is 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 going to work and it's gonna, it's going to look decent. And for for this master's artist who's getting the cookie, they're going to have to just. Be artistic, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, we mentioned on Tuesday as a team, uh, you'll have to put some icing on the, the dot to, to get the dot out of the, the rank, which is which is up in the top corner, uh, the the original image. But uh, but yeah, so it, it seems like we're we're wrapping up the stream early, uh, earlier than I expected. Uh, I, I I set this thing till eight, but um, this is this is done. This, this happened so much faster with uh, with Tinkercad's new features, and I, I kind of dig it. I will share this. Did I did I already share? Oh no! I, I there is. We have the link. We have the link in Tinkercad or in our Slack workspace. So anybody, you you can you can jump in here. You can take it apart. Uh, do things you want with it. Check it out. I'm gonna grab a screenshot right now of it and send it off to our our veteran and say, hey, look at this. So I'm gonna pull this aside. And let's go back to that right there. I'm gonna grab my screenshot of this screen and say, here's your, here's your things. We're gonna print them and get them, get you to those two options and uh, let us know how they work out. Maybe, maybe we can print some new ones. She's got a lot of time. She reached out with uh, plenty of time for me, so. And that, that's, that's gonna be the end of, of the stream here. Uh, I, I appreciate the gang. I hope you're all still with me uh, um, and hearing, but if not, 
We'll be back on Saturday, and I think Saturday I'm going to switch that to Zoom um, since I, I keep running into issues. But uh, I'll I'll drop I'll drop messages in Slack. For now, I'm gonna I'm, I'm about to turn the stream off, and with that, I'm gonna share a video. No, I, I'm completely flabbergasted by all the Tinkercad uh, changes. So to, to to wrap up the stream now that I've stalled and, and hemmed and hawed and, and tried to, to drag this out. I'm just going to play a little video from uh, Clever, uh, sponsor Clever. And if anybody catches the end of this, uh, use it. It's there to help people. Thanks.